You, you usually do. <laughs> Good morning. So, before we pray, anybody got anything on their sick list we need to remember? Nobody. Bobby, Bobby James is in the hospital up in, uh, I say up in Gainesville. I don't know if it's in Gainesville or not. He's in there having some GI tests, so he's having problems. So if you can remember Bobby in your prayers, Bobby James. Um, I, I do not. Wednesday. Wednesday, he, he, he did have the surgery Wednesday, and he did okay with it. That's all I know. I, I don't know what anything past that. Yeah. So that would be Steve Lanier, Stephanie's husband. Anybody else? Let's pray. Our God and Father, we are thankful for this day, for all that you do for us, for many blessings that you give us, um, for your love your grace, your mercy. And Father, we pray that you'll be with us as we look into your word today. Help us to understand the things that we talk about, the things that we see about your grace and your love and your mercy for us and your forgiveness and your son. And Father, we are mindful of uh, our brother Bobby having troubles at this time. We're also reminded of uh, Steve with his son. Uh, recent surgery. We pray, Father, that you would be with, with both of them and that you would watch over them and all the others, Father, that are on our list continually with uh, bad things going on in their lives. We pray that you would bless them to overcome. And Father, we pray that uh, you would be with them, that you'd comfort their pain and uh, comfort their broken hearts and help them. Then, Father, we pray that you'll go with us this hour be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to be in Luke, the sixth chapter. Luke, the sixth chapter. When you start Luke, the sixth chapter, sixth chapter there in the first verse, you'll see that Jesus and his disciples are walking through a grain field. They, um, they're plucking some of the grain fields, but the trouble is it's on a Saturday. So they get in trouble with the Pharisees because they're working on a Saturday. And you can go read how Jesus deals with that. Then you come down to the next section and Jesus heals on the Sabbath. That's another problem. Those are not things we're talking about today. We're going to get on down here to verse 12 through 16. <clears throat> we're going to talk about Jesus uh, choosing his disciples. Um, you ever been in a crowd like this uh, and was hoping to be chosen for something? Or maybe you're just standing all alone somewhere. I remember being in, high, in school, or thereabouts, and you would be picking teams, right? And so you pick two captains, and you don't want to be the last one picked, right? Because they pick the better ones early. So, you know, um, you can look at this in a lot of different ways, but there's sometimes there's some big crowds to be chosen from. And one person out of that crowd would be pretty good deal, right? So, if we look at it, um, I'm going to read this verse to you first. Verses 12 through 16. One day after Jesus went down, went up on a mountain to pray, and when he prayed all night, at daybreak he called together all his disciples and chose 12 of them to be his apostles. Here are their names, Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. We're not told exactly how many disciples there were, if there was a big crowd like this, or if it was just 14 or 22, or we don't know. Uh, at least I don't know. You may know. I don't know. So whatever he chose from, he chose from. He had more than 12. So uh, he chose 12 that night. Um, but you can imagine. Uh, if, if 
I remember correctly, he chose apostles before this time. No, he chose disciples before this time. He chose apostles right here. Well, they, he chose Peter and uh, all the other. I mean, he named them here. It says right here, he chose his 12 apostles right here. At any rate, at any rate, if you want to look at it, they did it earlier, or they did it, I'm not going to argue with you, but they did it earlier, or they did it here, it's still a pretty big deal to be chosen. Right, and it's happened right here. Okay, so so what would it be like to be picked as one of the apostles? Stop and think for just a, just a minute how special that would be to be one of the twelve. You've got the whole wide world. You got all the people that has ever lived in the world, and twelve of them were chosen. Twelve. Twelve were chosen. Look at the lyrics to this song I threw up there a little early. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line. When all the other not quites with all the other never, with all the never get it rights, but it turns out they're the ones who were looking for all this time. That's Matthew West casting crowns. Um, we come here to this, um, his next verse says, Moses had stage fright when David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and changed the world. What kind of men were that they chose? And what is he, what is he choosing them for? Ordinary men. Ordinary men. This the song here. He, he he portrays them as being outsiders. They would have been outsiders to the Pharisee uh, religious sect, right? They would have probably followed, probably been a member, but not anybody that they're going to be looking at to be a leader. Leader. Stop and think for just a minute. Jesus prayed about this all night long. Stop and think about prayer for just a minute. What, what do you think Jesus was talking to God about, about choosing the twelve? Now, now keep in mind that Jesus knows the hearts of every man. They come to him with this, uh, this idea that I've got a problem with you and he knows the problem before they ever get to him, right? Uh, I mean, he can, he can heal a man because he knows that he has faith. Who in here can look at someone and tell that they have faith? This is, this is Jesus. Jesus has proven that he is God, maybe not at this point in his life, but he has, he has followers. He has those that, uh, the miracles that he's already done. So what would, he, what would he pray to God about all night? All night. To, to guide him in the choosing of the twelve, okay? But he's God himself. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Maybe to help me make good choices? Would that be something that he might say? What, what do we do most of the time? What do we think of prayer? What do we think of prayers as? Is it requests? We, we pray to God. Is it uh, desires? These are things that I want or we need. Um, huh? Thanks. Thing, uh, thanks. 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 Wants and needs or thanks. Um, yeah. We pray because these are some of the verses we have in the Bible that we look at. You have not because you didn't ask. Uh, that would be a physical thing. Uh, most of the time. You ask it, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Matthew 7th chapter. 
right? These are things we see in the Bible. Let your request be made known to God. Did Jesus have a request of God when he already knew the men's hearts? I think sometimes we need to just have a conversation with God. We don't necessarily need to ask him things and petition him. Um, I, I, I think maybe Jesus was having a conversation with God. I don't know. I don't know. He retired often and went and prayed to God. And this wouldn't be the first, this wouldn't be the last time that we see that he prays all night. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yep. We're going to talk about Judas in a minute, so y'all don't jump too far ahead here. We're going to talk about his choices here in a minute. Um, okay. I think we could have prayed about them not going back, except for Judas did, but if they continued to do his work and see what he wanted to do, he wasn't going to make them do it. You know, it's their choosing to do God's work. Okay. It, at, at work, I know what I want to do. I know what we need to do. I got five well-capable supervisors that they're the same way. But if it's a big, big choice to make, it's a big decision, guess what we do? We huddle up. <laughs> uh, we might huddle up for a few minutes or we might talk about it two or three different meetings and, and bring things to the table to look at. Uh, you know, uh, this is a big decision. This is a big decision, and we'll see some more of that in a few minutes. Um, yes. Oh, Pam. Mm -hmm. Communicating with his father. Okay. Following the law. Uh, Jesus kept the law perfectly, by the way. Uh, there's another song called Confidence. It says, I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to do. But Lord, with your strength, I have no excuse because broken people are exactly who you use. So let's look at his choices. Jesus didn't pick them by mistake. Sometimes you want to look at Judas and say he made a mistake. I don't think he made a mistake. Uh, he chose them knowing who they were and what job they needed to fulfill. Okay? Uh, I don't know if he had two or three in the crowd that he was a little, okay, I can pick this one, God, or I can pick this one. Which one do you think I need to I don't know. Uh, I, all I know is he had a conversation all night long about that. Jesus didn't pick them by mistake. I'll just look for a few minutes uh, at this crowd again. Now, as he's looking out in this crowd, wouldn't be this crowd, but in a crowd, when we say Simon, you know what? He knew that he was going to betray him because Jesus knew everything. He knew that when it came down to the brass tacks of things and his last day, Peter would deny him. When he said Thomas, he knew Thomas was going to be doubting him. Okay? Uh, when he said Judas, he knew Judas was going to betray him. He didn't, pick, he didn't pick perfect men. He didn't pick the best. But still, he prayed all night long to God about it. Why would he pick him? He was not 
They have a job to serve. Why, why is there a bad king or a bad uh, kingdom in place? A bad reign in place? Who puts, who puts the leaders in the places where they're at? Read Daniel. Daniel will tell you that God puts them there and he takes them out. God puts them there and he takes them out. Um, I don't know. Everybody has a purpose. Jesus knew what he would do. Knew what he was capable of. Knew the person he was. Yes, sir. All that to be said that this is really isn't the less we want to look at because we want to look at us being chosen. Um, look at 1 Peter. Look at a few verses with me as we go through here. 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you are, you are not like that. You are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can, show, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. Once you had no identity as people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you've received God's mercy. Look at that first one I've got on the line. Chosen people. You are, a, you are a chosen people. You're not like everybody else. You are a chosen people. A chosen people. God's very own possession. God's. Once you had no identity. Once you were a nobody. Now you're a somebody. Once you were a nobody, now you're a somebody. Um... Once you had no identity. I'll go back to my song. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line. With all the other not quites, with all the never get it rights, but it turns out you turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time. You know what he starts his next his uh, chorus with? Because I'm just a nobody. I'm just that's how come he chose me. I'm a nobody. You want to put yourself in place with the apostles? Become a nobody. Become a nobody. Um, look at Matthew. Matthew, the um, 20th chapter, 16th verse. So the last will be first, the first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. I don't know how many disciples he had in front of him, but he chose 12. 12. And Acts. And Acts, the uh, ninth chapter, you've got, um, you've got Paul there going to Damascus, blinded by the light, and he goes into town, and he sits there for three days and three nights. He doesn't eat, and he prays. And then God comes, or an angel, or somebody comes to um, Ananias. Comes to Ananias and tells him, go to Paul. And Ananias says what? Sure thing. Be right there. No, that's not what Ananias said. Ananias said, what? You want me to go to Paul? You know who Paul is, right? Right? He's the one that takes people like me and throws them in jail. Or he's the one that takes people like me and puts them out in front of a crowd and takes everybody's coats and lays them down at their feet coats so they can get a good swing with a rock, right? That's who Paul is. You want me to go to him? Him. But that's where he sent him. Look what he says in verse 15 about him. He says, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way for he is what? A chosen vessel. 
a chosen vessel. Putting God's people to death, throwing them in jail. Got letters in his pockets to do so right then and there. But he's what? He's God's chosen vessel. Is he one, he's, is he one that you would go after to try to get somebody to, to do the job that Jesus was getting disciples to do? Doesn't seem like a very good fit, does it? If you're not worthy, if sin has eaten you up, if things of yesterday can't be changed today, and, and there's so many sins in this world, there's so many things that we do in this world that can't be changed, can't be changed. And, and, and this is what I'm trying to say here, is this is a person that God chose, one of those that couldn't change things today that happened yesterday. You know, I think uh, if any apostle that we would be like, I would think it would be Paul. Because so many of us were going in a different direction, a zeal for God, but without knowledge, just like Paul. And here we are, members of his church. How did that happen? Were we chosen? Yes, we were. We're going to finish looking at that very point. Okay, so, so when you're like that, when you think that I've got so much sin in my life, yes, ma'am. I think so, but we're just looking at him being chosen. We're looking at chosen part today. Chosen today. Hey, um, so, so if you have so much sin in your life, you can't change what happened yesterday or 10 years ago or 15 years ago. If there's still a scar somewhere that you can't ever get healed, if there is problems <laughs> in your life that can never be rectified, uh, there you are. All you got to do is think of Paul. Paul had plenty of that. Paul could never take those coats that were laid at his feet, hand them back to those guys and say, hey, take all those rocks back that you took when you stoned Stephen, and Stephen will get up and walk. That's never going to happen. Never. Never. Think of David. David had a lot of sin in his life. I mean, we, we look at him as, as man after God's own heart. We praise him pretty good, but if you get to that dark part of his life, it's pretty dark. Okay? But yet, he can still be chosen. Look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, 127. God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He's, he's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Why? I'm just a nobody. I'm just a nobody. Look at Ephesians. Ephesians 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Holy, without blame, and chosen. Look at James. In James of Second chapter, fifth verse. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Chosen. One last one. Revelation. Revelation, 17th chapter and 14th verse. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of hosts, the King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Called and chosen and faithful. I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. I want to talk about adoption. Anybody in here ever adopted a child? Got one. Two, have two, have three of us. Okay, that's special. 
That's special. I'll talk to you about my experiences with uh, adopting children. I, I, sat, I sat there with the judge when Deanna and I got married not very long afterwards. She had two children. One of them was eight. One of them was 12. And the judge looked at me and he says, Mr. Bunnell, you realize that when you sign this piece of paper that if y'all get a divorce, you're paying child support. These are your kids. It ain't ever going to change. I just want to make that clear before you sign this piece of paper saying these are my kids. They were pretty stern with me. They let me know exactly that those were my kids and that anything that a, that a, that a father has with children, you have with these two kids. You have with these two kids. Later in life, Dan and I adopted Jason. Uh, Jason came to us. Jason's a little bit special, as most of y'all know. Um, he comes. Uh, he, he came with some baggage, with some things that he don't have no control over, with things in his life that's just never going to change. Okay, he, he's a little bit aggravating to deal with sometimes. Uh, I can remember one of our one of our children. One of one of my children looked at me when he is having a bad day with Jason, and says, why'd y'all get him? And I just simply replied, he needed someone to love him. So, you know, adoption's special. Adoption's special because why? I have a choice. That judge could have looked at me and explained that to me, and I could have said, whoa, I didn't think about that. Never mind. I don't want that responsibility. Same with Jason. I didn't have to. I, I knew he had problems when he came in the house, okay? Um, that's the way it is. What are you going to get when you father a child the normal way? You're going to get a boy or a girl? <laughs> you don't know. They say the man has control over that, but I, I don't know. Um. Hello. Uh, adoption special. Anybody got any comments on adoption? Any of the ones that... You, did you do it three times? Oh, you're, you're, you're in line with me. My sister did it. My sister, she had one child. Then she had a couple of miscarriages. Decided she couldn't have another child. Um, somebody, somebody that's um, associated with Christianity and the Church of Christ says that, the, that we need you to adopt this kid before it's ever born, and, the, and she did. So she got that one, and guess what? She was pregnant, so she raised two pretty close together. And then they adopted another one that same way, and they're all boys, and she says, I just can't even adopt a girl. So then later in life, they adopted two more, by default, kind of, and one of them was a girl, so... Adoption special. Sometimes we as parents don't think it's very special. What I do this for? I know that Deanna and I did because we had our oldest, our youngest, next to the youngest son was a senior in high school, and this one comes in the house and he's eight years old. Whew, what do we do? It was many a day like that. Many a day. I, I want you to um, let me see. Okay, Alan's, Alan's not in the room. I, I've, got, I've got a quote from when Brenda died. I pulled off Facebook and I asked, I asked um, Jody if I could use it. She told me I could. Angels are singing in heaven. There's a rainbow that is shining. There's a rainbow in the cloud. When life's race is run and the victory's won, there's a rainbow in the clouds. I can... I can't imagine what my life would have been like if I hadn't been chosen to be mom's daughter. She was the best wife, mom, Mimi, and Aunt V. I can't imagine what my life would be like. You ever seen so many children that need to be adopted? I mean, they're, they're, they have nothing. They're never going to have anything. They don't even have a dad that's man enough to stand up and say, that's my kid. 
And a lot of times, not a mom either, but a grandmother that's raising him. And maybe she's in bad shape. That's how we got Jason. Jason was with his grandmother, and his grandmother had a, had a um, brain cancer. And she wasn't going to last much longer and didn't. He needed a home to go to. Nobody else. Dad's off somewhere in jail. Mom's pretty much whatever she is. So can you understand what Jody's saying? She was chosen. You ever watch any of these movies where the, where the child is just hoping that when the bell rings on the, on the house and he's in a foster care looking to be adopted? Remember how all those, all those movies that you watch that are like that are? That was Jody. I don't know that for a fact. Jody was chosen. Jody was chosen. A lot of them were chosen. So, that's our lesson today is that you're chosen. You're a special person. God chose you to be his very own. We should feel special. We should feel special. I'm way early. Anybody got any comments? Yes. According to the song, everybody's nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, stop and, stop and think for just a minute about those 12 disciples being born at the right time, in the right age, living in the right place that Jesus is going to come by and say, come follow me. What's the odds? If you play odds, what's the odds? But not, not very good, are they? If you go back to that, uh, the one, the verse that he alluded to there in Ephesians, according 
as he hath chosen us before the foundations of the world. Stop and think about it. Before God ever made this earth, he chose you. Yep. But there's only 144,000 of them most times. It's, it's just something to think about, though. I don't know how many people's lived in the earth. But think about the 12 that were chosen, or actually 13, 14, if you get down to the bottom line. Another aspect of this, too. We chose God. Yes. Yes. And, and it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's our choice, too. Because after I'm brought into this life, guess who controls my life? Not so much in my first few years, but the years after. By the time I'm 10, 12 years old, 8, 9. Edmund controls his, his destiny. If I want to be a great baseball player, guess what? I can do like Jed used to and get out in the yard and play baseball all day long. You know, if I, if I want to be a really smart guy in the books, you know, I'll be in, in, the, in the room there reading all the time like my wife does. Uh, you know, hey, it, it, it's my choice too. God put it there be available for me to be adopted to him as his own chosen child. And all I've got to do is say, okay. All I've got to do is say, okay. What if the child says, I do not want to be adopted? See? Their choice has to go both ways. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, the first two, if they'd have done that, Deanna would have just grabbed them by the ear and said you're going to anyway <laughs> if you don't if you don't do this God will choose somebody else mm -hmm. Danny. this is not a reference to individuals being chosen this is a reference to the general population of the world every one of mankind Jesus later on when he said I want that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. We have that responsibility to do that in order for us to be chosen and then to go on to be adopted. Right. Forever family of God. Right. My whole lesson here today though is I want you to I want you to remember that you are a chosen person. If you accept Jesus. If you accept Jesus, we can get all those details. I'm, but what today I want you to think that you're special. I, I don't want you to forget that fact that you are special. I know you got to do some things to get there, right? Uh, that's that's you controlling your part of the life. God's done His part. He's chosen you. All you got to do is choose Him. All you got to do is choose Him. But but don't let uh, don't let the chosen hundred and forty four thousand bother you too much, because you are chosen. Don't, don't stray away from thinking that because of their thinking on that 144,000. Or we get into those things where we can't be over on this side. No, you could be on this side because you're chosen. You are chosen. You are a special person. God's own elect. You might, you might ask why would we even, we even talk about this and, and look at how special we are. Isn't that a little prideful? I, I, don't, I don't think so. And, and I'll tell you why. I'll give you, I'll give you a, a sports analogy. If you've got a quarterback that don't think he can make the throw, guess what? He can't make the throw. you got one that's got plenty of confidence that he's the best quarterback there is on the team and he should be out there on the field and he should be making that call, 
because that's what's needed. That's how I want y'all to feel. You are chosen. There is nothing in this world that you can't do or accomplish because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All. It don't say some. It says all. All things. And I know sometimes we put, we put uh, limits on that all. But I, I think we need to step out of our box sometimes, our comfort box, and, and, and remember that we are a special chosen person, not full of pride, but to remember that I, I'm different than most. Uh, sometimes I should act accordingly, but yeah. Any other comments? Any other thoughts? I'm giving you five minutes. Woo-hoo. Thank y'all.